What's up, everybody? It's Draymond Green. Make sure you subscribe to the Volumes YouTube channel below so you don't miss any more of this great content going forward. After year 12, a lot of doubt. A lot of, oh man, he don't shoot the three. The mid-range is a, is a losing shot, blah, blah, blah. Now, in saying that, everybody say the mid-range is a losing shot, and then that's the only shot you, should, you see taken in the playoffs. Right. But yeah, yeah. they say all regular season it's a losing shot. But a lot of doubt, um, which I don't understand for someone that's accomplished so much, that's proven so much over and over and over again. But you faced a ton of doubt. Um, free agency, to me, didn't go for you how I think it should have went. Right, right. Um, the interest around the league for a superstar on the market, it wasn't what it should have been. Mm -hmm. I feel like you you channel that and you and you go into Chicago your first year, second team all NBA, all star again. What what was what was last year like for you reestablishing DeMar DeRozan? See, this is this is the dope thing that you know, people out there don't know. We we've had these conversations. We know it's been plenty of times. You you call me throughout this season was like, hell yeah, fuck yeah. I you know what I mean? It, it was never surprising to you. Um, so it's this obviously my first time speaking up on a topic, which is I think is it'd be very insightful. I think, you know, for me, my my three years in San Antonio was such a, a you know, it, it was it was such a question mark for me of trying to figure out the next phase of myself, you know, being in a place for so long, obviously Toronto in feeling like, you know, the franchise, all of a sudden you get knocked down back to humble beginnings and have to figure yourself out as a player, you know, doubts, doubt come in, questions come in, especially when all you see is a certain type of narrative that follow you. Can't do this, 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 this on down the line, you know, and it, and it, it takes a toll on you, you know, because, you know, me, I'm not the most outspoken per person to go back and forth on debating myself with somebody else. So it put me in a mindset of, you know, how can I figure this thing out within me and change the narrative in time? You know, it used to be moments where overnight I wish I could do something right now to change this whole night narrative. But I told myself my whole time in San Antonio, whenever I get my next opportunity, I'm going to make it makes sense why I was in this position for three years being in San Antonio. And that summer come up going in free agency, like you said, it, it it didn't go as planned. You know, it was, that kind of brought so much doubt in for me and put me in a dark place because I started to question like, you know, all right, where, where am I going now? What player am I going to be? You know what I mean? Like so many of these questions started to, creep in and you know a lot of people don't didn't realize you know I you know big names always kind of sign in the first day or two you know I think I would a couple of days into free agency was still such a question mark you know um was I gonna go somewhere for the one-year deal was this was I gonna take the minimal this this the, the narrative of it was was such a it put me in a fucked up place mm -hmm. honestly like and mm -hmm. I remember through that whole time it was three four days in a row, I, I didn't leave out the room. I didn't see the sunset. I didn't see the sun come up. I sat in a room and just being like it, it put. I was I was depressed. It put me in a depressed mindset because I didn't know what the fuck was going to happen. You know, was I going to come to L.A.? That didn't, that fell through. I didn't, that didn't happen. Was this? Was this? You seeing you seeing guys sign other places? Everybody hitting me like, man, what you going to do? What you going to do? And there was certain moments where I had no fucking clue what I was going to do. You know, and um. When the Chicago thing came around and I made that happen, it was such a relief. But at the same time, it it angered me and put me in a in a in a very frustrating mental of like fuck this. I'm about to I'm about to I'm about to demolish anything you got to say about me. I'm not gonna say nothing. I'm gonna just work my ass off and I'm gonna prove not just for myself for anybody who feel like. They get counted out. They get doubted or get told that that they can't do something. My whole career has kind of been based off that, but I never let it, you know, bring me completely down. It, 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 it knocked me down, but I got back up. And for me, that moment of going to Chicago, I just told myself, 
this is a new opportunity. I'm gonna make the most out of it in every every type of every way. You know, and I remember shit, every time I did something, you'll call me. Every time it's like, <laughs> keep going, <laughs> keep going. You know what I mean? It was it was those conversations of like, you know, my peers see it and they understand it. You know what I mean? Going, I remember when I signed with Chicago, it was the worst free agent signing. Yeah. It was like, yeah. That's what you feel about. That's what you feel about me. Absolutely. So it was like it was it was it was a vengeance out, not just for myself, but just for anybody that get put in that situation because it's so easy to fall victim to the bullshit that they put on you. Absolutely. That 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 is so Absolutely. false. Mm -hmm. You know, you could lose confidence. You could you could doubt yourself. You could feel like maybe they right. Mm -hmm. When it's like, nah, I don't care how much older I'm getting. It's all about how much you put in, how much you love, and how much you're willing to sacrifice to keep getting better. Absolutely. And that was my whole approach, my mentality going into last season. Hennessy celebrates those who never stop, never settle, and their never-ending pursuit of greatness. Maurice Ashley lives his passion. An inspiring story of intellect and brilliance, his ability to push the potential of his own mind to new levels of greatness is universally inspiring. In the world of the mind, there are no limits. Hennessy, never stop, never settle. If you want to learn more about Maurice Ashley, visit www.hennessy.com. 21 plus, please drink responsibly. Such a beautiful thing to watch. And you, and you, you spoke on a couple of things, uh, depression, your mental, that I want to get into. But it's very interesting to me because, like you said, I, I feel like I've lived this with you all year. Yeah, yeah. From from last year free agency and talking to you every day like, yo, you good. Uh, yo, what about this? What about that? To then the conversation turning like, yo, come to the Warriors. And you're like, fuck no, I'm not coming there. Right, like, yeah. I'm not yeah, coming yeah. to play with y'all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, bro, but you come to the Warriors, we can win a championship if you come to the Warriors. He didn't come. He did say that. We still won a championship, yeah. but he didn't come. However, I had to throw that one out there. Um, like you said, the thing that really pissed me off most, and aside from our relationship that made me call every day or every time you did something was like, and you just hit on it, are you going to take a minimum? People were like, are you going to take a yeah. minimum? I mean, even when I call talking about you should come to the Warriors, I'm talking about no minimum. A minimum. That's baffling to me. For someone who's still athletic, still scored a basketball, don't get in no trouble, true professional, in a bucket. A minimum. The disrespect for me just didn't sit well. How do how were you able to channel all of that into being DeMar DeRozan? Man, it, it, you know, I'll be lying to you to tell you that I didn't have days where, you know, it just got extremely heavy. You know, you kind of just shut down and take a moment to yourself to kind of regroup. But I always just told myself, my, my favorite saying to myself was always, make something bad that happened make sense down the line. Whatever that may be, that's all. All I used to tell myself: Let me make this this negative make sense down the line. And I always told myself whenever I got down, whenever I felt a certain type of way. So everything I, I whether if it was being a, trying to be a better son, be a better father, be a better friend, be a better basketball player, it was always trying to find different elements of just trying to be better to make sense of the negative that I'm going through. You know, and um, I just stuck to it, bro. I ain't gonna lie. I just stuck to it. I had days here and there, but I just stuck to it. And every time I got that opportunity and I trust everything I put I put into it, and I and I knew nobody suffered like I did. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Because when I, I never screamed out, I never lashed out, you know, I never wanted nobody to feel sorry for me. I never threw a pity party. Nothing. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Nothing. So it was always me telling myself, no one suffered like I, I suffered. So everything else is going to be easy. Mm -hmm. And 100%. That's just how I, I, I took the approach. You know what I mean? That's And that goes for anybody that feel like they're going through something. You're not alone, but it's always a way you could channel that that emotion, that 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 negative 
feeling that you may carry into something positive as long as you make it make sense. You know what I mean? And that's that was just my mental. That was just my approach. And to this day, I still take the same approach. Mm -hmm.